Welcome to the first part of a short tutorial series in which we will cover the basics of using Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit. So what is the XR Interaction Toolkit? The XR Interaction Toolkit, or XRI for short, is Unity's native solution for implementing VR, AR and MR interactions across a range of platforms. The idea of XRI is to give you one unified toolkit with which you can make use of the same components and methods irrespective of the headset you are using. So, for example, your XR rig and controller interactions would be set up in the same way regardless of whether you're targeting the Quest, the Valve Index or the HP Reverb. If you plan on releasing a VR app on multiple platforms, XRI would certainly save you a lot of work over using each platform's native VR SDK. We will be using MetaQuest 2 in these tutorials, although the platform agnostic nature of the XR Interaction Toolkit means that you should be able to follow along even if you have a different VR headset. Please also note, we will be using Unity 2021 running on Windows 11. Ok, so let's get to it. Open Unity Hub. Click the New Project button and select the most recent LTS version of the Unity 2021 editor. I'm using version 2021.3.10 here, although it may be a higher version by the time you watch this. Select the 3D URP template. Give your project a name, I'm simply calling it XRI. Now click the Create Project button. The editor will now load the new project. The Unity editor has now opened and our project is ready to start working with. The first thing we will need to do is set up our build settings. Go to the top menu, go to File and then Build Settings. In the Build Settings window, since we are targeting Quest 2, click on Android. If you are using a different VR headset, select the appropriate platform for your device. I'm changing a couple of settings appropriate for the Quest, such as setting texture compression to ASTC. If your Quest is connected to your PC, you will be able to target it under Run Device. Now click Switch Platform. Switching the platform will cause Unity to re-import the project assets. Once this is complete, click the Player Settings button. This will open the Project Settings window with the Player Settings section selected. I will now proceed to change a few settings to ensure that our app will run smoothly on the Quest. For the sake of time, I'm going to leave out some optimizations. If you want a more in-depth look at optimizing your app, however, please take a look at my video called how to optimize Unity project settings for Oculus slash MetaQuest 2. There's a link in the description. First, I'm going to change the graphics API to Vulkan. Next, I'll make sure that we have a valid package name. I'm setting the minimum Android API level to 23, also known as Marshmallow. Now I'm setting the scripting backend to IL to CPP. And I'm setting the target architecture to ARM64 only. Close the project settings window and then the build settings window. Now there's one component in the universal render pipeline that, if left active, will have a huge detrimental effect on our app's frame rate. At least, it will on the Quest. That component is the Screen Space Ambient Occlusion component. I will show you how to remove it. First, go to the Project's Assets panel in the bottom left. Select the Settings folder. Inside the folder you will find some Universal Render Pipeline assets. Click on the URP Balanced Renderer. This renderer is used when working with an Android platform, such as the Quest. Now, go to the Inspector panel. Notice the Screen Space Ambient Occlusion component is present. Click on the drop-down menu in the corner of the SSAO component. 
the option to remove the component should appear. Click on it and the SSAO component should be deleted. Now, we need to add some XR specific packages. Go to the top menu and click on Window and then Package Manager. In the Package Manager, go to the Packages filter menu at the top of the Packages list. Select Packages Unity Registry. Now scroll down to the bottom of the list. Select the XR Plugin Manager package and click on the Install button. Now select the XR Interaction Toolkit and once again click Install. A warning dialog will appear which essentially warns you that Unity's new input system needs to be enabled for the XR Interaction Toolkit to work. Click the Yes button. Another dialog will appear warning you to make a backup before the upgrade. Since we haven't added any interaction components to our scene yet, there should not be any issues. Click on Go Ahead. This will trigger a restart of the Unity Editor. OK, the Unity Editor has restarted and we are back in the Package Manager. Scroll through the package list until you find the OpenXR plugin. Install this package also. OK, we are finished here. Close the package manager. For the next part of our setup, we need to go back to project settings. In the project settings window, make sure that the XR plugin management section is selected in the sidebar. The components and settings that you are now able to access in this section are the result of installing all those XR packages via the package manager. You will notice that the XR plugin management panel has settings that are grouped under various tabs. Each tab relates to a specific platform. First, make sure the leftmost tab is selected. This contains XR settings for PC. Tick the Open XR checkbox. You may be wondering why we are changing settings under the PC tab if we are working with the Quest which is of course an Android platform. The reason is that we may still want to test our app from within the Unity editor with our headset connected to the PC. Hence we also need to configure the XR settings for PC correctly. OK, now let's select the Android tab. Once again, click the Open XR checkbox. Right now, some of you may be wondering, what is this OpenXR that we keep on selecting? Let me briefly explain. Just a few years ago, numerous consumer VR devices started hitting the market. However, each manufacturer would develop their own protocols for handling communication between their VR hardware and the software that can run on it. As the number of VR devices increased, it started to become increasingly difficult to develop applications that supported them all. For example, the Unity game engine developers needed to code an entirely different communication layer for each and every VR headset that they wished to support within Unity. This situation persisted until OpenXR was introduced in 2019. So what is OpenXR? OpenXR is an open standard for connecting VR and AR devices to the applications that run on them. It was developed by the Kronos Group, who were responsible for developing the OpenGL and Vulkan APIs. Right now, OpenXR has achieved wide adoption across the industry, and Unity has been quick to integrate it into their engine. The XR Interaction Toolkit has been designed to fully support it. Anyway, I'll put a few links about OpenXR in the description. Let's get back to the tutorial. You should still have the Android tab selected. Go to the Project Settings sidebar and expand the XR Plugin Management option. Underneath it, you should now see an OpenXR option. Click on it. In the OpenXR Settings panel, we will need to add at least one interaction profile. Each interaction profile corresponds to a specific controller type. Since we are using the Quest, you will need to add an Oculus Touch controller profile. Without it, Unity's input system cannot receive input from your controllers. Also, 
we will want to tick the Oculus Quest support checkbox. Now, we should go back to the PC tab and add the Oculus Touch controller to interaction profiles there also. OK, we can close the project settings window now. We are pretty much finished for this tutorial, so it could be a good time to save your project. To do this, go to the top menu and select File, and then Save Project. In our next tutorial, we will set up a simple scene and get our VR headset and controllers working within it. See you then.